Even in the age of video games, pinball remains one of America's great pastimes. Its popularity has bounced around over the years, but in the last decade, the number of international tournaments has climbed from the hundreds into the thousands, while attendance at the events has risen more than fivefold. Pinball's popularity dates back to the 1930s, and there's one special place where you can flip back in time and see its evolution. For these kids in Alameda, California, this is day camp. Welcome everybody to week five of season seven. Later that night, it's the adults who meet for league night, competing for bragging rights and the chance of a world pinball player ranking. There was no place to play pinball back in 2002. Michael Sheese changed that, starting in this 350 square foot room. What were the early days like in this room? It was kind of a backdoor speakeasy kind of thing. It was called Lucky Juju Pinball back then, open just one night a week. It was bring your own beer, five bucks in the jar, and come play pinball till midnight. It was just a Saturday night thing. I wasn't going to get a business license. It wasn't really a business. So how did you then go about building from just having the 16 machines or so to creating what we're in today? Well, I had a bad habit. I was buying a lot of pinball machines. Five balls on this one. She bought his first pinball machine at age 14. By the time he had 36, he figured he'd better do something with them. I started researching, well, there's got to be a pinball museum. And I looked and looked, but there wasn't really a museum. Found out nobody was doing any preservation on any of the pinballs. There were commercial commodities that we were going to toss into the dumpster. But I thought, this is a really important part of American culture, and it, it shouldn't just be discarded like that. With that, the Pacific Pinball Museum was born, and Sheis took it one step further. People that come here come to something they may think is an arcade, but what they're getting instead is a lesson in what? A lesson in art, lesson in history, uh, a lesson in physics, and a lesson in engineering. And you get to play pinball. And you get to play pinball, yeah. <laughs> Through purchases and donations, there are now more than a thousand machines in the museum's collection. About a hundred are on display, spanning more than a century of the game's history. We have games in here as early as 1887 all the way up to the late 70s. Manager Darcy Bruno gave us a tour of the museum, which includes an old bagatelle, the French precursor to the modern game. It's kind of built along the lawn bowling sort of croquet things. You can yeah. see kind of wickets and little holes. These are all the 30s. Which were outlawed across the country after the Great Depression because they were affiliated with gambling. So we get a lot of our older customers were like, I was never allowed to play pinball. And this Humpty Dumpty from 1947 is the first to feature flippers that players could control. Which is yeah. the crazy thing because you don't think of pinball not having flippers. Right, That's the whole point That's of it. That's the whole point <laughs> is that you can go in and play. As the game evolved, so did the techniques to master it. Because it is a game of skill. Yeah. So the lights and the arrows and things really tell you where you should be hitting the ball. Okay, that wasn't fair. That went so literally right down the middle. So that's you used your nudge, Oh, right? yeah. And then this is one of the most popular games in the museum is Upper Deck. Oh, baseball. So one button launches the ball Single. and one ball Ooh. is the bat. There you go. All right, double. Oh, wow, this is your game, Dana. We stopped by Gorgar, the first talking machine from 1979 before entering the modern room. This is where we have all of the games from the 80s to the early 2000s. Every back glass is kind of a little snapshot of American culture. So you can go through the whole history of pinball and get a pretty good idea where America's coming from. Most of the museum's collection is in storage and selectively brought out for show and play. So this is our exhibition room. When we visited, it featured pinball artist Art Stenholm. The idea is not to have, you know, fill the place with pinball machines, but more like New York MoMA, you know, where they rotate art in. It's not feasible to have Every pinball more machine. Than, I'd say more than 250 play. machines right. available for play. And why would you want to? It'd be crazy. Maintaining so many vintage machines is one of the biggest challenges, like a broken flipper on this Sea Witch game. The museum relies on volunteers like Mike Harris, or as the Silicon Valley software engineer is known here, Google Mike. What is it that draws you 
to the games? That's a good question. I don't know. Honestly, I like working on them more than I like playing them. You know, I enjoy playing them, but I came here for the social. Somebody could go hang out, play in a softball league, or someone else would mm. say, I'm going to go to trivia night at the bar. Is sure. that what this is for you? Oh, yeah, totally. That, says Darcy Bruno, is the key to the game's longevity. Pinball really brings people together. You can be alone, you can be with friends, you can be old, you can be young. Everybody can play pinball. It's kind of funny, it doesn't take brains or brawn. It's just, uh, you know, how well do you know gravity and which way the ball's gonna go. <laughs> it was so much fun, can I tell you, to actually get back and play. And the idea that there you give 20 bucks, you get to play as many games as oh, you want. Wow. They're a nonprofit and they're leasing their space so they'd love to have an actual space that was theirs to call their own and maybe they could display a few more machines. But I'm telling you, really fun afternoon. I'm happy that. to give them my 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? yeah I'm, I'm curious. I, I'm assuming that video games ushered in the demise of the pinball but what brought it back? They had a rise in it as people sort of gravitated back towards the past, this idea of something vintage. And there are people now that are looking to try to find a way to connect it, to have interconnectivity so that you could play pinball anywhere and then have all of those scores up so people could join together. Yeah, so much fun. Yeah.